Hello, and welcome back to another special podcast right here on the Total OS Today Technology Channel. Total technology for beginners and beyond. Well, for today's technology topic, gaming and the future of gaming, I have a special friend of mine, a first-time guest. His name is Trevor, and Trevor knows a little bit about gaming because I think when he was born, right next to his, tri uh, his crib was the first-generation Atari gaming console. Okay, well, maybe not. I'm just kidding. Trevor, how are you? I'm doing good. That might actually be true. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow, cool. I, I know my dad did have an Atari, so... Okay, well, there you go. Okay. See, I was close, and I swear, guys, I didn't even know that. That was just a joke I thought at the last minute. See? Okay. Um, so we will talk about gaming tonight and uh, maybe talk some, talk some about our, our favorite games, the future of gaming, uh, PC versus cons consoles and stuff like that so trevor thanks for you know for for the show tonight greatly appreciate it i'm glad to be on great okay so before we get started i have a quick question for you you know i'm a big halo fan so what do you, what do you think of halo and what do you think the the future of halo should be uh i mean i'm i'm a halo fan too so okay. i've always been a halo fan i love the series i mean the series has had its ups and downs Right. For sure. Um, I would say even we'll just go to the latest iteration, Halo Five. Yeah. Um, I would say Halo Five probably has the best multiplayer in the history of the series. Yes. Um, a lot of people would argue for Halo Two, but I, I really thought Halo Five did a really good of balancing all the weapons, so you never feel uh, underpowered uh, when playing it. And it got back to Halo's core of, of going to the power weapons, finding them on the map, and mm -hmm. a lot more strategy can go on in that. Um. <laughs> Yeah, it it uh it seems like in Halo Four the campaign was good, but the multiplayer amp in Halo Five it was the opposite. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, you remember for, for Halo Five in the commercials there was this big build up of this epic battle between uh, uh, Spartan Locke and the Master Chief, and it was like there's no there's nothing there. Now the ending for Halo Five I thought was was somewhat appropriate, you know, with Cortana going rogue and all that. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Halo's great uh, as far as the storyline though. Where do you think that the story should go, or, or does it really matter? You know, I don't I don't really know. To be honest, I haven't really given it too much thought. I think maybe that's because the Halo Five campaign was pretty lackluster. Yeah, um, I mean they they build us up with this big battle between Locke and the Master Chief and then really really they're on they end up on the same side and it's and they realize that and it's like okay we're friends now so it, it didn't really end up being this big thing so they build it up with no real payoff it was kind of misleading yeah I mean uh, Halo 5 is probably the only campaign that I haven't gone back to uh, I've, I've played through pretty much every other game I think multiple times at least yes. a few times maybe yeah. on some of them but same here. Halo Five, one time the campaign, and I just, I just, uh, I mean, some of the missions with with the uh, with Master Chief were great, mm -hmm. but the rest, it was weird because there's what ten missions on Halo Five at least, yeah, something like that. I'm honestly, I don't remember most of it to be completely and, honest. Right, and only two or three have the Master Chief. I'm like, I thought this is all about the Master Chief and what's going on with the universe and Cortana. Anyway, I thought the ending was great. The cliffhanger was superb, but the campaign, yeah, it was not all that great. So, all right, uh, what what are some of your favorite games, by the way? Uh, I tend to go more towards, uh, at least as far as what I would call my favorites, would probably be RPGs. Uh, so I'm a big fan of the Mass Effect series. Okay. Um, I just recently fi finished Mass Effect Andromeda. While it's not the best in the series, I think it pays off well in the end, even despite all of its issues Okay. Uh, when it came out. so. Aren't they making a movie? Mass Effect, or did I hear I that? I mean, it, there's been rumors about that for a long time, but none of them have ever come to fruition. Okay. Um, so, I mean, they they have a lot of books of the series, and the books, for the most part, there's a couple that aren't great, but uh, for, like, the first few books were all really good and tied to the universe great. Yeah. I remember playing the first one, Mass Effect, and I think I got the music of the soundtrack somewhere, and I thought the soundtrack was great also. You know, it's kind of like one of those games. Definitely. You know it's going to be good. Yeah, you like the first Halo and the great story and the music. And Mass Effect, I think, fits the same way, right? Yeah, I, it's it's a really good like sci-fi, like big picture, you know, epic 
kind of thing that's going on. And, and I think it's very similar to Halo in that sense, while it's very different in, you know, the right. choices you make in the in the actual character building right. and stuff like that. So Right. Yeah, it would make sense to make a Mass Effect movie. Of course, I thought 10 years ago it made sense to make a Halo movie. They started it, then they stopped, and there was rumors and back and forth. I guess too much, too much politics, huh? Yeah, I think it was it was a politic thing, and and I, maybe it's for the best. Most video game movies aren't good, so. <laughs> I have noticed that. I mean, have any been good? Maybe the first I, Resident Evil. Maybe? Yeah, the first. I would say the first Resident Evil was was a pretty decent movie. I mean, it's not the greatest, but it's not terrible either. Um, yeah. I would I would even say as far as going with the lore of what it of the game. The first Mortal Kombat movie was fun, and it, it very much captured the game in all its glory. I mean, no one would call it a great movie, but it's it's a good like popcorn action. Yeah, movie. I think I remember so, that. I remember uh, uh, the, the movie Doom with with The Rock, you know. Yeah. And I thought, are you kidding me? This is, I mean, the the game was so much better. Yeah. And then they made the movie. It's like, but but you're right. That didn't work out. Uh, Need for Speed movie didn't work out. That was kind of disappointing. Uh, somehow the the quality of the translation gets lost. Yeah, I, I think there's a disconnect. I think what it comes down to is the people that work on the games don't necessarily work on the movies. They yeah. you know, hire somebody from Hollywood to make a script, and maybe that person just isn't as knowledgeable about the series or no exactly what gamers are looking for when yeah. it translates so it doesn't i don't think it just works out well well if they would have just copied the story of the game if it probably would have worked just keep yeah, it simple it, in yeah. some cases yeah i definitely agree um but it's 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 hard to adapt that too because a game is going to be several hours where a movie has to be you know an hour and a half to two and a half hours so um, they kind of have to pick and choose what to put in and what to cut. But, I mean, it's definitely doable. They just need to find someone that can do it well. And that's... It can be done. Well, I suppose a whole campaign of a game is more like, what, nine to ten hours probably? That depends yeah. on the game. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, there's probably one to two hours of a core story. And then they then they kind of like draw it out or like stretch right. it out. Yeah, depending uh, on the game, yeah. Right. I remember the first Halo game playing that on a on an outdated PC back in 2005 a single core machine I have to tell you <laughs> I had to crank down the resolution because uh, my computer couldn't handle it and mm -hmm. watching the aliens and and the flood move at you in slow motion kind of like ballet dancing was kind of silly <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the first the first halo and reading I believe that game was based on the the novel halo the fall of reach which is a great book also well it, it was uh actually the first game was uh the na well the novels came after the game came out i see um, but okay. the first one the first book the fall of reach was actually the inspiration for reach for halo reach okay um whereas the the book halo the flood is yeah. actually the first halo game ah uh, okay i think God, I've read so many novels. All I remember is I liked reading Halo, The Fall of Reach, and that's a good story. It's a good for book. So if they just copy the book to a movie, that would work. Yeah, uh, that was a really good book. Yeah. So I don't – I mean, you know, they've done a few things on HBO with Halo and online and stuff. It, not bad considering a small budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I liked some of that stuff a lot actually. Yeah, remember on the Halo 5 launch, there was a little uh, miniseries directed, I think, by Ridley Scott, who's yeah. releasing Alien Covenant next month. Um, Halo Nightfall. It had yeah, its I moments. Yeah, I, I like Nightfall. I mean, it. Yeah. And I, I like the end, and it showed how the Master Chief could be incorporated into right. a movie like that. And it, it, it had some cool moments, especially for something that was uh, low budget, at least as far as Hollywood standards go. Right. I mean, and they give us like little snippets of what could be. Hollywood style and all this, but mm -hmm. for some reason, like the deals or whatever, just falls through it, and it's kind of disappointing after ten years. Well, so. originally, I I'm pretty sure they wanted uh, Neil Blomkamp, uh, who did District Nine, ah, to do the Halo movie, but yeah. this was before District Nine. Yes, so he was still a new director, mm. and they and basically whoever was behind putting the money up front for it didn't want to do it. Yeah. Um, but he put together this awesome demo for what a Halo movie would have been, and it yes. was when and a lot of the stuff you see 
in District 9 is what he used in that, and that movie was really cool as far as the special effects with the aliens and stuff like that. And That was so. an acclaimed movie, by I think, by the critics and the fans, if I recall. It was, uh, yeah. That's that's why, like, it's it's very disappointing, almost, that, that he didn't get the chance to, to do a Halo movie. Well, I guess there's always hope for the future, but yeah, you you would think of a of a such a worldwide fan base for Halo, it's this is a no brainer. Uh, but that's just me, Trevor. So yeah. yeah. Well, let's see. What else do I have here? I want to talk. Okay, here here we go. Uh, gaming PC versus consoles. What do you think? I think it just depends on what you like to do. I mean, it, it's it's very dependent on how you want to play. I mean, I personally just want to sit back and relax on on a couch or something with mm-hmm. a controller and play a video game. Um, but I mean, I can play PC games and I have a bunch of PC games, but it's not my preferred play. But you know, there are people that prefer to have a keyboard and mouse, whether it be because they have more precision in like a shooting game or that's mm-hmm. just how they like to play games. Um, or they have a powerful PC that can, that can make it look better. Uh, that sort of thing. So. so it sounds like you're more into the the quality of the game and the and the story, and you don't need a souped up PC to play your games, right? No, yeah, I'm I'm not really much a I don't I don't care so much for the graphics or the power. I mm-hmm. mean, it's it's awesome when something looks really cool. Yes, like I, I will say that, but that's not the be all end all for me because I mean something can look really good, and if it has terrible gameplay or a terrible story, I mm. it's not gonna. Yeah. It's not gonna right. be fun to play. So. so you pretty much are an Xbox type of person, right? Yeah, I yeah I play games on Xbox, PlayStation Four, and uh, now the Nintendo Switch. Oh, okay, all right. Um, I've seen uh, we were talking about Halo. I've, I've seen some bits and pieces of news about Halo Six. It appears that the game will not be released this year, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, you would think. Uh, considering somewhat of the disappointment of Halo 5, at least the campaign, they would want to correct it, <laughs> uh, correct the course of the game as soon as possible. But I don't know if you read something else, but it looks like Halo 6 is due out. We might get a teaser this year, but it looks like Halo 6 is next year. Is that what you've been hearing or reading? Or uh, that, Yeah, I mean... I'm not surprised Halo 6 isn't com- going to come out this year. Okay. Uh, it... it makes sense to kind of give the team more time, especially if they want to right. do a better job of it than what they did with Halo 5 um, and make a better encompassing package. I mean, yeah. they're still supporting Halo 5 if you're into the multiplayer. Um, but I've heard rumors, I don't know whether there's any truth to them, that maybe they might do a remaster of Halo 3 uh, uh, this year, uh, which which would follow kind of what they were doing the past few years with the, you know, they had the Halo 4 and then they did the Master Chief Collection, which had the Halo 2 remake you know remaster in it and yeah then they did halo 5 so that i mean it sounds kind of ba- you know how they were going with yeah. it yeah well the halo 2 remaster anniversary i thought looked freaking terrific that was part of the um master chief collection yeah uh and halo 2 remaster i thought and then they added some extra cut scenes and but it looks terrific i think they uh added some sound effects and but it's amazing what 10 years can do in technology and graphics. Uh, it's amazing. But I thought they did a really good job with uh, with both the first Halo Anniversary Edition, which came out in 2011, I think, right? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, but a, a Halo 2 remaster is really... You know, that's probably... Barring the first one, except the first, because the first one's always special, but Halo 2 might be my favorite. I just love the storyline and the music... And and, the, and some of the some of the silliness silliness of the dialogue, you know, with the mm. grunts and everything, I I kind of still remember that. Although Halo Three also was a great story, but I remember Halo ODST and the firefight mode, which is great. Yeah. So that needs to come back. So. Yeah, I wish they would do a better uh, ver because they have the Warzone firefight mode in Halo Five now. Uh, so it's yeah. not quite the same. No, it's not. Uh, uh, I, I I would really like a traditional firefight mode to come back. Yes. Uh, so hopefully Halo Six will give that back to us. Right, right. I totally agree. Let's see here. Um, we've talked about this briefly uh, when we were having coffee, but what do you think is the future of gaming? Um, you know, I'm more of a, 
a physical CD type of guy have something to collect. Uh, I guess that's not what's happening now. And we, we talked about the future of GameStop. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can that be a viable company? But I guess those are two questions in one. But what is the future of gaming and can GameStop survive? Well, I, I definitely think that the future is going digital. Uh, a lot of a lot of com I mean, if you look at if you look at PC gaming, uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty much all digital yeah. at this point. There's very few physical releases released on an actual disc. Um, if you go into a store to buy a game on PC, generally it just has a code in the box that you put into Steam, and then you download it on Steam. Right. Uh, so I think we're gonna see that as as internet connections get better, as internet gets more prevalent, I mean, there's always going to be physical, mm -hmm. at least for a little while, because there are some areas of the country where internet connections are still terrible. Right. So you're going to need those physical copies out there, and that's where physical media will do well. Right. But in places where internet's good and you can download stuff, um, I think digital game. I mean, it's it's just nice because now they have it to where you can preload the games. So the weekend before the game's out, you can have it installed, and then the time you know twelve oh one comes uh, Tuesday at midnight, mm -hmm. uh, you can just start playing. So um, I know a lot of people like that; they don't have to leave the house, that sort of thing. It's it's a convenience thing, uh, I think. Um, I personally do more digital than I do physical. Uh, the plus side to physical is you do get a lot more sales on uh, on used games and and games in general, which I think will help a store like GameStop survive for the time being. Mm -hmm. But as their market share gets less and less as far as the new releases, I think they'll have to switch their business model around a little bit. Um, you can you can see them doing that now because um, they purchased Think Geek a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And if you go into their stores, a major part of their store are collectible items like right. figures and toys and stuff because a lot of the, that stuff has a high markup. Yeah, so they're making a lot of profit off of that sort of thing, and right. and that's the kind of stuff that people are going to go into a store and buy, and not necessarily do it. But you know, Amazon has that stuff too. So true. It's you know, it, it, <laughs> it just depends on. Well, I I, say what I mean. GameStop's not going to be dead in the next couple years, but yeah, will it be around in five, ten years? I don't know. So you think, uh, well, it sounds like it's pretty much going to be digital downloads, but they'll always, well, not always, but for the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. the convenience of walking into a store for those who want to buy a CD or a game on a disc or trade in and buy a little extra something for the kids or whatever, you think it's more a matter of, of, of convenience and the excitement of going in to buy something physical with your kid or whatever. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. Yeah. And it, for those hardcore collectors too, that's why that's why you see a lot more collectors editions uh, um, of games because they're trying to draw people into the store to get people to spend more money, right? You know, to to try to offset the the cost there. Um, right. That's definitely part of that. Um, but uh, last year, seventy four percent of sales uh, were digital. Seventy four percent. Seventy four percent. Yeah. Wow. So. At least that's according to the latest figures that just came out uh, probably about a week ago. So. I did not think it was that high. So when was I the last time? In all honesty. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, when was the last time you bought a physical game, like on a disc? Oh, I, I bought one recently. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I bought one. Like, I bought some I bought some of my Switch games, um, but that's because it has a, a, a lower capacity hard drive. So. Ah. I wanted to have them on a cartridge so I didn't have to worry about that. I mean, yes. I have an SD card in there um, for that, but okay. but it's still not huge. Uh, so any room I can okay. not take up with that. Uh, but I buy discs too because if if they're on sale. Um, okay. And uh, like Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. within the first two weeks of a game coming out, they give you 20% off. Okay. So... And they don't do it on the digital version. It's only on the physical. So I've bought games that way too, uh, just okay. because it's more of a cost thing. But if it wasn't, if it wasn't a cost factor, right. then I would just do everything digital. So it sounds like you have no problem buying games on a on a physical disc, right? No, no. I okay. just prefer digital, um, just because at this point, it, I have a closet full of 
you know, DVDs and stuff that, <laughs> yeah. that are just lying around. Collecting yeah. Stuff that, yeah. Yeah. Know, just don't want to sit with a bunch of stuff anymore. Right. Know? It does add up. I mean, even here with my collection, it's not that extensive, but, um, I don't. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm just old fashioned. I just like having a physical disc. But I guess if you're into it, the amount of discs, uh, physical discs piling up, can add up. So, um, who would who would be so so really as far as the competitors out there would be what Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop. Yeah, I would say say Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop, Walmart okay. are probably the biggest ones. Um, possibly Target. I would say, right? Yeah, Target's pro- Target's probably up there. I mean, around here we don't really have a Target close by, so right. it's not okay. really an option here. But right, but yeah, those are those are definitely the bigger ones. Okay, for sure. I mean, GameStop I would say makes up most of that market. Right. Um, right. I would say closely behind them would be Best Buy and Walmart. Yeah. So, well, let me ask you this: What do you what uh, future games are, are you looking forward to? Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot, uh, the new, uh, Lord of the Rings game coming out mm. looks really cool. Uh, but th- there's a lot that just hasn't been announced yet. So, uh, uh we got E3 coming up in a couple months yeah. and that's when we'll really get a good picture of what's at least what's coming out at the end of the year. Um, cause honestly this year we've seen a ton of great games at the beginning of the year. So it's been actually a little bit hard to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> The last, um, the last Call of Duty game, I didn't get it. What, what was that called? It, it, it was kind of uh, like Infinite Warfare. Okay. Uh, and if I recall, it, it kind of reminded me of Halo. Was that the one? Was it? Was, it was in space or something? Yeah, yeah. They did some space stuff with it. It, it. The campaign of it was actually really good. Okay, so you I, have it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have it. I got a copy. Uh, uh, my buddy Kent actually is a programmer on that ah. game. So. Oh, cool. So cool. I got a copy through him. So I know there was some uh, backlash. Why are they going in space to make it like Halo? But if the story is good, then who cares, right? Yeah, I thought like they did a really good job with the campaign. The campaign was just really fun. Okay. Um, which I think it's been the it was probably the best campaign they've done in a while uh, for that game series. And ah, uh, wow, they they just actually announced that it's going back to World War II. Hmm this year which i'm actually pretty happy about because i've been yeah i've been why, wanting to play it a world war ii call of why, Duty again. why are they doing that trevor um I, guess... I think i think the fan base wants it oh for for a long time you know the fan base wanted it to be modern and and mm. stuff but I, I think we're now getting to that plus they make a new call of duty every year so they can make True. they have three different studios working on it with a three year cycle of that of each okay. studio developing it mm-hmm. so they can have different studios work on different types of call of duty so this okay. this year they'll have a world war 2 one next mm-hmm. year they can still do a future one true and make those people happy too so well let me ask you don't spoil it but the last one infinite warfare right did that end in a cliffhanger or not no it didn't oh that's interesting. You would think if they wanted to continue that space theme, they would have a cliffhanger. Okay. I just thought I'd ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's how I would write the story, you know, because, of course, at Halo 5, it does end with a cliffhanger, you know, with mm-hmm. Cortana doing her thing. But Yeah, I mean, Halo Halo's more of a serialized thing, whereas Call of Duty, mm, some of them follow each other, like Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, or yeah, Modern yeah. Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3. Right. Like, those have similar threads, but... Um, at least in recent years, they've all been pretty different. Okay. Yeah. What are you playing now? Anything particular? Or? Uh, well, I just like I said, I just finished Mass Effect Andromeda. Okay. Uh, and honestly, I'm debating on what to start. <laughs> next, okay. To be completely right. honest, uh, just a lot of good games came yeah. out at the beginning of this year, and uh, I'm debating between uh, Horizon Zero Dawn for PlayStation Four, uh, uh, Persona Five, and uh, Near Automata, which are all uh, PS4 games. So, cool, man. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna buy next. I may just go into the local, you know, GameStop and maybe pick something used that I haven't played, you know, in the past, and just maybe one of these nights, you know, when it's raining outside or cold like tonight, and I'm ta- and I'm not talking to a friend or anything, just pop a game in. 
uh, you know, check the used bins for Xbox One games and just go just go with that. Just something, you know, to kill time with. So yeah. Um, okay, Trevor, do you want to add anything else before we wrap this up? Um, trying to think of anything else like really going on in the gaming world. It's kind of a we're kind of in like a little bit of a lull period. Yeah, at the yeah. Moment. Right. Because um, E3 will be in June, and that's when all the big, right. big gaming news and everything. Uh, I would, I would like to say that uh, I think the Nintendo Switch is a, a lot cooler and a lot better than I think a lot of people thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, and it's doing extremely well. Okay. Uh, cool. So that's that's good for Nintendo. Uh, because so what, the, what's okay? Well, let me ask you quick. What's so cool about it? Uh, the fact that it's both portable and a home console. Ah. So they basically took, you know, both both kinds of systems because they're known for having their handheld in their home console and made it into one. So you can just pick it up and go, you know, hmm. and play anywhere, literally. And you totally agree with that concept. Yeah, it's it's an awesome okay. concept. Uh, cool. I mean, it's okay. it's really cool. It's really easy to just like take take on the go if <laughs> You know, and that sort of thing. They they did a really good job with it, cool. and as long as uh, they do a good job of getting games on the system to support that, okay. uh, I think they'll do well. They'll do better than they did with the Wii U for sure. You remember before we wrap this up? You remember when the when the Nintendo uh, was it back in 2005 and the handheld controllers? I guess the first ones they they didn't have straps on them, so the people were throwing their controls yeah. at the TV. Yeah, that, that was yeah, that was the first Nintendo Wii. Yeah. The first Nintendo Wii, and I yeah. thought, well, duh, what were they thinking, right? Right. Uh, I remember when that thing hit; it was it was new, it was different, it was it was such a big hit. Um, but yeah, it was, and then yeah. and then after that, you know, they followed up with the Wii U, and they, their marketing message just wasn't good for it. Yeah, they uh, started great, but then they kind of fizzled. Yeah. Well, well, people didn't understand that the Wii U was a new console mm. as compared to the Wii. They thought it was just an add-on to the Wii at first, and and they just didn't they didn't get enough uh, developers on board to support it, and that's mm. kind of what what hurt the Wii U. I see. So, so you think the Switch that's that's the new thing, and that's how it should be the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, it's it's a really cool system, um, and Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is amazing. Mm. Cool. It's, okay. One of the best games out there. Wow. Uh, they, did a, they did a good job of taking what was good about Zelda and making it modern. So you're into in-depth storylines, aren't you? Uh, a lot of times, but Zelda doesn't really have one. Um, okay. But it has really good gameplay. So, okay. you know, sometimes sometimes you don't need an in-depth story. Sometimes you can have really good gameplay, you know. So okay. It just it depends on the game. Right. Depends on my mood, too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always like a good story, you know, when when buying it. Like when like, like you know, when buying Halo 5, I was expecting a good story mm -hmm. and it wasn't. So I kind of felt cheated in it. I mean, the multiplayer is fine. Yeah. But maybe I'm just a rare type. I'm more into the campaign than the multiplayer because I, I just look. Who doesn't like um, a good movie with a good story or a good? Yeah, book? I mean, for yeah. the for the most part, I'm the same way. I I play the campaigns more than I play the multiplayer on a lot of games. Mm. Uh, Halo Five is probably the exception to that. Yeah. Uh, where right. me and me and friends have played it, you know, yeah. off and on since it came out. Right. Um, and there's a few games where I, where I'm where I really like multiplayer. Like Overwatch is a really good multiplayer game. Okay. Um, it's only multiplayer, so ah. there's no real choice there. But but there are certain games that that I can get into the multiplayer a lot. But for the most part, I'm more of a campaign guy. Like Call of Duty last year, I didn't really play much of the multiplayer. Okay. So, but I like the campaign a lot. So. Yeah. I think I might. I might. I was thinking about picking up. What's the game before Infinite Warfare? Call of Duty. They had a the famous actor. He plays the bad guy. What's I think it was uh, Advanced Warfare. That's it with Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. I yeah. heard that was a good story too. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll pick up that one since I've never played it. Yeah, so that one was pretty good. It was. Yeah, that okay. one had a pretty good campaign. Yeah. All right. I'm, I might check it out because that would be new for me. So because I haven't played mm -hmm. it. So. Okay. Well, Trevor, this is fun. Let's let's do it again. Um, my friend Trevor, um, a master gamer who was born with, with an Atari console <laughs> next to this crib. That's what he says. Uh, I, I would not be surprised either. Check out um, uh, Trevor's podcasts. Uh, you're yeah, still doing those, right? Yeah. yeah, I do a few. Uh, I'm we're gonna I'm gonna be starting more. Um, so just check out SpiderDuck.net. 
Okay. Um, has all my stuff on there. I'm working on one, uh, the Daily Diatribe, which I'm trying to find out what I want to do with that. I think I'm going to take it down to a couple episodes a week instead of being daily. Okay. Uh, but uh, other than that, I mean, I'm working on trying to get a comic book one going with some friends uh, okay. and a regular dedicated gaming one. Cool. Uh, so... Are you posting these on YouTube or is it, or is it, um, uh, the daily diatribe I, I'm posting on YouTube. Okay. Um, the other ones I'll probably end up posting on YouTube. Okay. Um, cause it seems like that's a not, it's a good avenue to post on multiple platforms. Okay. So iTunes plus, right. Plus, uh, YouTube is, is, is a good idea. I think. Right. Okay. Well, I have to ask you what, what made you come up with the name spider duck? Uh, <laughs> It's fun. It was uh, back in high school. Uh, some friends of mine did it, which basically became the logo on SpiderDuck.net. Mm. It was something that they did in Paint mm. back on like an old like Apple whatever I had in high school. Like uh-huh. this was 2002 to 2004. Okay. Um, so they did it. They made it on a Paint program, uh-huh. and then like had it had it saved on one of their iPods. And it just was like a sp- like a little comic they made, uh, you know. Okay. So it was just kind of like, uh, I just wanted it to be like kind of a dumb name, like, you know, one of one of the, something that was this fun and would catch your attention. It has kind of a ring to it, Spider Duck. Yeah, you know, it yeah, just, and it just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, folks, there you have it: the secrets of uh, social media and how some people come up with their. Name spiderduck.net. So check it out. And uh, the podcast, or at least some of the podcasts, are called The Daily Dire Tribe. So check. And did you do something on gaming last week or two weeks ago? Personal thoughts or something? I think. Yeah, I, I did. I've done a few Daily Dire Tribes about gaming. I talked a little bit about uh, Project Scorpio, the new Xbox coming out. Oh, uh, that's I, right. Yeah, yeah. I did one on uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, which, okay. I, fin- which I just finished. Um, and, uh, one of the other podcasts I do sporadically, um, just because it's hard to, for me and my buddy Ian to get together, uh, the Trevor and Ian talk show where we talk about like movies and TV and stuff we recently, okay. uh, did an episode that just came out, uh, well, as of this recording today, ah. um, it just, I just put that up today. Cool. So. All right. Uh, Trevor, this was a lot of fun. Let's do it again if the listeners would like us to do it again. I'm certainly up for it. Uh, don't forget, you, you, you guys can either respond to me or my friend Trevor, again, at spiderduck.net. And if yeah, you got, and, uh, yeah. You, can, you can follow me on Twitter at Trevor Oz. That's O-S-Z. Yes, yes. So uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Great. make sure to follow me on there, and, and I respond to everything. So Cool. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for joining in and listening to this very special. I think this is my first gamers podcast. I think, as far as I know, I'm doing this over seven years. Uh, I'm not. I mean, I love games, but I'm not a gamer per se. You're more. You are more the gamer type. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. If you guys would like to uh, listen to more product or more product, more uh, podcasts like this, or maybe on a live event. Let me or Trevor know, and uh, don't forget to uh, su- you know subscribe to uh, Total OS today and uh, Trevor's channel, or just send him a le- or just send him a, a hello on SpiderDuck.net, and uh, we'll just go from there. Trevor, how does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, thank you so much for watching and listening. Thank you to Trevor, and don't let the spider ducks bite you. Have a good one. Ciao.